Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, November 10, 2016. This is the week in charts. There's a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading or, as I often sum it up, all predictions are about the future. And a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. So what are we going to talk about? Well, current market conditions and specifically, will Trump make stocks great again? Your questions on trading, your favorite stock picks. If you don't mind, wait until we get to the live charts. I have some charts in the slides. But if you can wait till we get the live charts for your stocks, that'd be awesome. And then just type in one symbol at a time and hit return. You could ask about a dozen stocks or 20 stocks or whatever. Just one at a time, and that way I can I'll know which ones I covered out of fair and uh, be fair to everyone. Uh, I want to follow up a little bit on patience and just letting things unfold. And, and it's kind of interesting because positions kind of going against us a little bit today, but I have an answer for what to do. And then ogre entries or not, and we'll talk a little bit about opening gap reversal for those of you who are, aren't familiar uh, with my stuff. Oh, an ogre is an opening gap reversal. Now, just to recap real quick, last week we talked about, in the last two weeks, I should say, we talked about the patience to wait for your pitch. And we also talked about the patience for to let things unfold once you take the setup. And we're going to continue to focus on that just a little bit. So during the actual trade, and by the way, we did talk a little bit last week or quite a bit about mind sculpting. And I did get the book in and started reading it. And it's a pretty good book. Uh, it's by... Um, Ian Robertson, and then I don't have the name in front of me right now, but it's a um, it's worthy read. If you go and watch last week's Wicked Chart, I mentioned it there. So during a trade, you have to wait for an entry. Then you have to place a protective stop once you get entered, take partial profits when offered, and trail a stop higher. Now, that sounds pretty easy, but it's difficult for many. I'm going to flesh that out just a little bit this week because we have a lot to cover. But we have talked about that quite a bit over the last couple of weeks. So after the webinar, go in and watch those last few weeks while you're waiting for this one to process. And the fifth thing you need to do is just wait unless there are one of the above things to do. Now, last couple of weeks, I had posed the question and got the answer. Why is it so difficult for successful people such as doctors, lawyers, automatic transmission mechanics to trade? And why do they seem to settle for mediocrity? And why can't they be patient? And Dr. J, a client of mine, told me that we have no training to prepare us for sitting on our hands and waiting. It is simply not part of, our, of the mindset. So you may have had many years of bad training when it comes to trading. And the real world and the trading world are often, are often two diametrically opposed things. So what do you have to do? And we talked about this mind sculpting thing last week. But you have to be willing to see yourself not doing anything once you're in a position, even if that position begins to chop around and go sideways. As long as your stop isn't hit, the thing to do, as always, is to just follow your plan. That's, that's very hard for many people. And as I said last week, it's the easiest, hardest thing that you ever do. And by the way, we're going to look at a chart here in just one minute as things unfolded. And what's interesting is when you're looking at charts, let's say you're going back and look at charts and you're doing some historical analysis and you're like, wow, this trend following thing really works well. But what you fail to realize or may fail to realize is each one of these little bars, oops, each one of these little bars is an entire day. And could you really sit through weeks, months, and even years of a trend, even though sometimes it goes sideways? So that's an entire day. So what would you be doing during this entire day? Well, hopefully you're off saving lives or building buildings if that's what you do and not staring at a screen. But it is a lot harder to actually to do it. On the surface, trading is, is very easy, but in reality it's a little bit difficult a little bit more difficult than it looks. But it's not nearly as hard as most people try to make it. And one thing that I was writing about recently, I'm trying to finally wrap up my slides for this uh, introductory course that I'm working on and then, go, and then go into production. But there's always a reason 
to exit. That's not a margin call. That's actually a trailing stop. If you guys can hear that in the background, I just turn that down. That's a good. That's good news. So um, anyway, there's always a reason to exit a trade, and rarely a reason to stay. And then one thing, one reoccurring theme, which actually ironically came from Dr. J also, was I'd been talking a lot about how you end up in this state of regret. And I think it's uh, his name is Robert Frey talks about that 75% of the time you're going to be in a state of regret. And, and it's kind of ironic that, that I didn't set this up, I swear. But that, that little noise you heard in the background was a trailing stop on a British pound position that I opened up a couple of weeks ago. And it only recently went into the black. And this was a, an intraday position based on a 60-minute hourly chart coming off of lows, and it was just a bow tie. Nothing, I'm not saying anything uh, proprietary or anything I did. It's just a little bow tie pattern on a 60-minute chart coming off of major lows. And so the last couple of weeks, or at least maybe uh, at least 10 days, I think, this position has been pretty much underwater, and now it's turning into a very nice position. Uh, but had I bailed out, which I was tempted to do, it wouldn't. And I didn't mean to talk about that, but it just kind of came up. So there's always a reason to exit a position and rarely a position re reason to stay. So let's take a look at the CNX, which I've received emails over the last, let's see, we've been in this thing for eight months, nine months. Over the last nine months, I received quite a few emails on what to do with the stock. Well, there's been a stop in place, as there always is, a trailing stop, I should say, that's been trailed higher throughout this process. And a lot of times, it just stays where it is. There's nothing to do, right? But if you look back at the trade, we initially had an immediate loss. It triggered in, and then the next day, we're at a loss. And then the day after, the day after, the day after, the day after. So you're looking at this chart, and as I said a minute ago, when you're looking at stuff like this historically, you're like, oh, yeah, it just went up in the last nine months. Well, if you zoom in here, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and well, eight if you count this one, but let's just say seven days. So for over seven days, and that's trading days, so that's a week plus a couple of days, that's about 10 days, 10 calendar days, you were underwater. So roughly a half of month, almost, you were underwater in this trade after triggering in. That's not easy to sit and settle for that losing trade for that period of time. And you can see on the chart, when you look at it like this, it sort of looks like just a little blip, right? Now, let's look at what happened. So we did get the, we did get the initial profit target hit, or well, the profit target was hit, but what happened then, the stock began to come back in, and then at the least, it became dead money. Now, once again, if you were looking at where you were, if you mentally monetize these profits here, then you had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, pretty much a month or close to a month of sideways action. Then it went on to make new highs, and then, lo and behold, it went sideways again, this time for two months. So you're underwater, at least if you monetize where you were, for two months. And then what happened? Well, it had nearly a bow tie sell signal, so again, another reason to exit the trade. And then it went on to make new highs. Of course, then it turned into dead money once again. And then this time, when I started getting emails yet again, there was a bona fide bow tie sell signal. And then it went on to make new highs. And then recently, it imploded. And recently, there's a bow tie sell signal. And as of yesterday, it was trading higher. Now, what is it doing today? Well, it's coming right back in. So what do you do? Nothing. Just follow the plan. So you have to have patience once you get into the trade and let things unfold. Great question, Jerry. Jerry says, Dave, could you elaborate on the difference between discretion and micromanagement? Okay. Discretion is making a minor tweak to the methodology to improve performance. Micromanagement is aborting the plan flat out. So, for instance, let's say we get in a little position and let's say it triggers in 
and our initial profit target is right here. And the stock rallies up, let's say it gets there pretty quick or almost there, and then it comes back in. It gets almost there, and then it comes back in. So it gets within, let's say, a few cents of this profit target, just to make the example really good. It's okay if we're looking to take half profits. It's okay to take half profits here because that profit target is being neared. That's discretion. That's not micromanagement. That's just saying, okay, the plan, let's say this level is, uh, let's just make it eat like $11 each. Let's say it's $11. And you're at 10.55, okay. And a lot of times it'll come within a cent of the profit target, and just can't quite get there. It's okay to take profits a little early. Now, let's say you're in a position. Let me get that uh, screen back up. Let's say you're in a position, And you trigger in, and things are going really well. You take partial profits. It's all all is good in the world. And you're trailing your stop higher. Well, let's say that that stock comes down and barely nicks that stop. Okay, let's say futures are really weak overnight. You know the market's going to open lower. You know your stop's pretty close. So in a case like this, you can pull your stop on the open. And if the stock hits the stop, the mental stop now, then you could say, okay, well, if it keeps dropping, I'm going to have an uncle point in mind. Let's call it a UP, an uncle point, okay? Well, we're going to get out, no questions asked. But if it turns around and goes right back up, then we'll put that stop back in and then continue to follow the plan. So it's a minor, minor, minor tweak in the plan. And it might just be like pulling your stop for five minutes, letting the stock reverse, if it does reverse, or waiting to see if it reverses. And if it does reverse, put your stop right back in. So it's a very minor tweak. Micromanagement would say, well, I don't think this stock has any more potential. It's dead money. Let me just get out and completely abort the plan. Now, keep in mind with discretion, and I've gone through, uh, I've gone through this over and over again, and it seems like you only really need a little discretion about once every three months. Now, I can't guarantee that because we could have a string of stocks that require a little bit of discretion. But for the most part, discretion is only necessary about once every three months. So once every three months, you get kind of close to that stop. You might want to pull it, see if you get an immediate reversal. And if not, uh, you have to exit, okay? Or once every three months, you might get really close to that initial profit target, but it can't seem to get there. Or if it gets really close, let's say you get in a stock, let's say like this, and then it just shoots higher. And within like the first or the second day, you're almost at initial profit target. The move is so great so fast, it's okay to take profits a little early, okay? Micromanagement would be you were in this trade, this prior trade here. Micromanagement, and I see it all the time. It's the biggest sin that I see when it comes to trading. Micromanagement would be day one or day two or maybe even day three. You're like, you know what? This position sucks. I'm getting out, okay? And then what happens? One of the biggest winners of the year. It turns into one of the biggest winners of the year. I can guarantee you that micromanagement quite often will pay off over the short term. A lot of times like this, a stock will trigger in, bounce around for a week or two or three, and then go right back down. You would have saved yourself a lot of money by exiting. But the reason you don't do that is micromanagement will never pay off longer term. Trend following, and I'm always I always phrase trend following within my methodology, but just trend following in general, you know, it's kind of like a pick on trend following sometimes like, well, it can be streaky, it depends on outliers uh, as, it, as it relates to my methodology, but that relates to any methodology that's following a trend. And by the way, the only way to make money is to follow a trend, is to catch a trend in the market. Even if you're a counter trend trader, a new trend better develop. So the point I'm trying to get to, and believe it or not, I do have one, is if you exit early before your stop is hit and not follow your plan, then you will never catch a big winner. And big winners are crucial for the methodology. I like to kind of use the analogy of if you quit every time you get to the 50 yard line, you're never gonna make you're never gonna make a touchdown. You're never gonna win. You don't win by playing not to lose. And I'm not a huge ball fan, but I do occasionally watch the Saints, and I, I, it, they don't have it. I don't think they've done it as much recently. Of course, they, they haven't done great recently, um, except for the last couple of games. But 
they used to go into this prevent offense, and it made me nuts. Once they were up a little bit, they would just try to run the clock out, and they'd end up losing the game. So playing not to lose is not a winning strategy. You might want to write that down. And that goes for life and stocks and markets, okay? So hopefully that answers your question, Jerry, but I'll be happy to uh, flesh it out further. Angela says, you, fo you preach not focusing on a day-to-day -day changes. When is time to focus on the account totals in the portfolio? Um, well, as long as you're doing well over year over year, then I wouldn't worry about it too much. But keep in mind that if you are a trend follower, you can go a long time, six months, eight months, sometimes a year or longer, and be in the minus column. Now, if you're losing your butt, and you're and you have excessive drawdowns, then maybe you might be doing something wrong. Okay, but drawdowns will come with the territory, and as long as what you're doing, as long as you as what you're doing is co conceptually correct, if you're following the trend and you're picking the best and leaving the rest stocks, okay, then you just have to have faith and continue to follow along. But yes, you will get whacked sometimes. Yes, sometimes you'll get cleaned out. But it becomes a he who fights and runs away lives to fight another day situation. Sometimes you get knocked out, you pick yourself up, you dust yourself off, and then you start all over again, like Peter Tosh saying one time. So and it's tough going through a drawdown. Drawdowns suck. I don't care who you are. I have friends that run hundreds of millions of dollars. I have friends that run billions of dollars. And I don't call them up when I see their fund performance is tanking because they know it's tanking, okay? They don't need to be reminded of it. By the way, you don't have to email me when things are not going well. I, I know they're not going well. I'm watching them. <laughs> Probably too much. But no matter who you are, don't feel lonely. Don't ever feel lonely like it's just you. We all go through these periods of drawdowns, and during those periods of drawdowns, you're going to be a little bummed out. There's nothing you can do about that. It comes to territory. Um, I think it was Mike Moody had a good analogy once. We were talking about re relative strength, but it makes a good analogy for life. If you're going to have a baby, you're going to end up with a lot of baby poop. Having a baby is great. You know, my daughter's, uh, my youngest is now it's going to be 17 years old, 16, 17 years old, 260 now. And she's done some wonderful things, and it's a wonderful thing, and blah, blah, blah. It's great to have kids, right? For the most part, sometimes, I guess. <laughs> but you're going to have a lot of baby poop early on if you're going to have that baby. So if you're going to trade, you're going to have losses. If you're going to trade, you're going to spend a lot of time in a state of regret, as Robert Frey says. So it comes to the territory. The heebie-jeebies, okay. Yeah. Okay. The question is, open and gap reversals or not? And this is a... This is, a, I guess you'd call this discretion on a trade. So let's just talk about them when it when it comes to entries, and I, and I guess I could touch upon it also when it comes to uh, discretion on stops. So let me let me talk about entries first. So we had this position coming in to Tuesday, I'm sorry Wednesday, and it was actually on for a few days but didn't trigger. And the entry was right here, and it's a trend pivot pullback, also an IPO, hot IPO type of deal. And we had this massive rally overnight, or massive reversal overnight, I should say. Dow was down 800 points on the perception that Trump might win, and then it started going up on the perception that Trump might win, you know, on the reality that he won, I guess. It's kind of interesting. And you got to be careful with those initial reactions, and I'm sure we'll talk about that in one second. But you can see the stock gap well above the prior high. Now, if you think about the way I trade, for the most part, we're looking to play pullbacks. And a pullback, we're looking for a reversion to the mean move within the trend, okay, within the trend, okay? In other words, we're looking for the market to snap back from 
oversold back to overbought, and that's going to give us our swing trade. And then hopefully, I know, hope, ha ha, but we don't know, but hopefully it turns into a longer term trade. Now, we don't know that it will. This is why we take profits here, and this is why we trail a stop. So we hope for the best, but we accept what the market gives us using a trailing stop. And hopefully, like the prior example, we're in that trade for nine months, 10 months, 12 months, maybe maybe two or three years even, okay? We hope for the best and just accept what the market gives us. Now, in a case like this, notice that it gapped way up here, well above the entry point, and it was also all the way back to the prior high. So in a case like this, I would suggest you avoid the trade, especially coming into the market. You know that it's going to be a crazy-ass opening, okay? You know it's going to be uh, duck and futz on the open, okay? You know that, okay? So you got to be really careful putting new positions on when you have such a huge thing happen overnight. But Dave, I thought you said ignore the news. Yes, ignore the news, but be careful with putting orders in before the open, okay? That's where a little discretion comes in. So your discretion would be, well, I'm going to enter here. Well, it opens way up here, and then immediately begins a reverse. What you do is you say, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to let it go, okay? Because it just gapped, it gapped way higher, and it's just not worth taking the trade. So that would be how to handle an open gap, gap reversal. Now, let me show you discretion because uh, I think it was Jerry brought up discretion. Let's say you were, you happen to be along this trade for from for whatever reason, and it rallied up, and then you had a stop. Let's say you had a stop like right here, and it was becoming dangerously close to the stop. Well, you come in after a night like Tuesday, and the stock opens down here. It just kind of blows through your stop on the open. Now, you know that there's going to be some sort of knee-jerk reaction on the open, so you pull your stop before the open, and by the way, if you're going to exercise some discretion, I would recommend that you don't carry orders overnight. In fact, if you're going to use discretion, you really can't carry orders overnight. So you come in, let the stock open. Let's say it opens right here, okay? And then it might futz around a little bit, and let's say it begins to reverse and go back up. Well, then you can put your stop back in below this opening range if it makes a significant reversal. And then go about your life, save some lives, build some buildings, do some other great things, okay? If you're Craig, you go out and train some dogs, right? Or train some owners of the dogs. <laughs> anyway, before I digress too far, so that's that's discretion. Micromanagement would be, well, it's kind of going, it's going down for three or four days in here. I better just bail out, okay? When attempting to place protective stop on some of my recent IPO trades, I find that stop orders are not allowed by the exchange of that particular stock. Have you encountered this problem yourself? Um, I have some hard stops in on some IPOs, and I haven't had any problems with that. I tend to mostly use uh, mental stops on a lot of things, but if but if the stock is, uh, you know, as I just said, a case like this, I might want to go about my life, or I might have what I call an airbag stop in, a stop that's kind of far away. So I can exercise a little discretion if I have to, but I haven't had the problem too much. But that does uh, it does happen on occasion. Uh, maybe email me privately, and we'll talk about um, your broker or something. But it it it, it is possible, yes, because uh, I was actually surprised on some of the stocks that they would they would actually take a stop uh, on those. And some brokers will will take a stop and they'll say like not held or something. But yeah, it does happen sometimes. But in that case, uh, you need to set an alarm uh, so you'll um, get out if you have to. All right, I guess the question this week is, will Trump be good for stocks? Well, before we get into that, I, I do have some random thoughts I'd like to go through. You need to be careful with big picture ideas, okay? Because logically, they can make a lot of sense. But markets are often illogical. 
And that's the problem that many people have with markets, especially especially the highly educated people, folks like you, because you often confuse the issue with facts. It makes sense. If something makes sense, then it's like, well, it, it has to work. And quite often, it doesn't. It's also easy to become a little emotional in this process and to become attached to a big picture idea and not want to let it go. And the other thing to think about is reality usually never really unfolds exactly as planned. Okay, And I'll show you a great example of that in just one second. So what's the answer? Well, you know me. Just the charts, ma'am. We're just going to look at the charts. We're not going to try to factor in that Trump is president-elect and will be president and how it's going to affect the stock market. We're going to follow the charts. And as trend followers, that's what we do. It's kind of like, you see that latest Geico commercial? When you taste something bad, you want others to taste it also. The little raccoons are eating. It's funny. It's what you do. Uh, like salt and pepper push it. It's what you do. But you can see here, take a look at metals and mining. We had a huge pop yesterday, and now we're breaking out to multi-year highs. So, so far, so good there. Now, that's being led so far by steel and iron. Why? Well, because Trump is going to try to, or says he will, cut out steel from China, okay? So without the China steel, our steel stocks are going to do pretty good. Well, that's the thought, and again, you have to be careful with that, but you can see they've been trading higher, and now they're beginning to break out decisively in here. So as trend followers, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to follow along. And as we get setups, we're going to take it. Now, copper's also doing fairly well in here, too, so that's a good thing. Uh, nice little gap yesterday on the Trump news. Gold, not so much, okay? Gold overnight, the commodity was surging, at least early on, but then it backed way off. And again, the perception of reality and reality are often two different things, and that's something to kind of wrap your head around. It's like the news. The news doesn't matter. It's the reaction to the news. Okay. Now, I'm not sure if the transports are a direct Trump play, so to speak, or not, but you can see the transports are doing fairly well in here, and they're breaking out to new, I believe that's multi-year highs. We're going to look at the live charts here just one second. I'm getting ahead of me, Craig. Now, it's kind of interesting. Health service is not doing so great. I don't know if this has anything to do with um, the current state, um, uh, all the issues, I guess, with the um, Obamacare or whatever. I don't know if that's related to this or not. Uh, but areas like manufacturing are doing really well. I mean, you know, you're going to build that wall, and it's going to take some serious manufacturing power to build that wall, Okay. Uh, material construction stocks had a, a, a very impressive day yesterday. Look at the size of this bar compared to the normal volatility of the stock. I mean, sorry, this um, sector. So materials and construction is to take a um, lot of uh, materials to build the wall. It's kind of interesting. Bonds imploded. And this becomes a testament for, I don't want to digress too far, but this becomes a testament for intermarket technical analysis. Intermarket technical analysis only matters when it matters. Many years ago, I seem to remember that you could predict stocks off bonds or bonds off stocks. Now, not so much. But it only matters when it matters. Recently, bonds tanked a little bit. Stocks tanked a little bit, okay? But here we have bonds imploding and stocks didn't implode, other than something like utilities, which I think I have in here. There, there they are. You can see it's utilities got whacked fairly hard in here. Interest rate sensitive areas like utilities not doing so hot. Manufacturing, banging on new highs. I don't know if I mentioned that one already. Now insurance and financials are doing really well. 
and that's I forget why but that's loosely connected to a potential Trump play but you can see insurance now breaking out to multi-year highs so as I said a few days ago we could end up with a plethora of setups really soon and banks are following suit with those financials also breaking out nicely to new multi-year highs defense stocks are doing phenomenal as you can see big breakout to I think that's all-time highs on defense and I'll confirm that now stocks like gun stocks not doing so good right because the other person was supposed to take our guns away and this person is like uh, hey let's just uh, let's enjoy our guns right so you can see this is Smith and Western this is Ruger also imploding on the news Diversified services banging out new highs. I'm not sure what what the direct connection there is. Maybe it's going to take some diversified services to get that wall up. Now, again, you have to be careful confusing the issue with facts. So we were just talking about the gun stocks imploding because there's not going to be this fear of taking your guns away. So what's interesting is, what did gun stocks do during the tenure of the most anti-gun president in the history of the United States? Well, you would think you would think that guns would would be uh, would not do well because the president is anti-gun. So getting back to getting back to um, I got the slide a little mixed up here. The point is so far so good, but let's not confuse the issue with facts. So markets could be illogical and reality might not fit perception. So the point is, if you take a look at Ruger and Smith and Western, Smith and Wesson, I always say Western. Since Obama's Obama took office. These stocks have been in tremendous rallies. I mean, obviously, there's some drawdowns in between, but net-net moves of 800% or more in those stocks. So sometimes you have to be careful not to confuse the issue with facts. Okay. Um, I did – where did my, my coal chart didn't come up? I, I don't know why it didn't come up. But, yeah, coal is one of those things. We'll get to the live charts here in just about uh, – just a minute or so. Um, By the way, no chart show for the next couple of weeks. Uh, next week is Traders Expo. In fact, let me show you that. Uh, for those of you who uh, who can make it, I'd love to see you there. Um, we'll get a cup of coffee or a beer or some food. <laughs> All three of those, th those things I like. So it's next week. I'll be at Traders Expo. So if you want to join me, uh, make sure you use this link on this um, website. I don't get reimbursed, uh, reimbursed or what is, what's the, uh, compensated for that, but they do like to see who's bringing people to their shows, and uh, the popularity of this uh, keeps me coming back. Okay, so uh, use this link if you want to come uh, to come see me. Love to meet you. It's in Vegas. What else is going on? Oh, uh, and then next week I'll have an announcement about this if you can't make the show, but I'd, I'd prefer you just make the show. It'd be awesome if you did. Still working on the Guinness course. Uh, I'm ready to start filming it really soon. I've got my studio ready to go, and I've been doing some dry runs on some things, but it's uh, it's it's really become really massive, and I'm I'm very proud of, of the work. It's probably I'm probably more proud of it than anything I've done. Uh, so far on the educational side. If you are interested in what I'm doing, and this is completely free, make sure that you're at least on a delayed service, and you can find that on my website. It's under one of those getting started things. Let's see if we can pull that up real quick, and then we'll hop into the charts. Start asking about stocks if you like, because uh, we'll be in the charts just one second. If you come here, uh, let's get started. And then go down a little bit. By the way, um, just another announcement real quick. 
I'm back up and running with the TC people. And then I have some special offers here. If you do sign up for TC, uh, I'll give you $100 off anything on my website. And then you'll also get T uh, $25 off on your TC package uh, for starters. So uh, do check that out. As you're going to see here in one second, as you just saw, I use Telechart extensively. I do use other packages, but that's probably I use that more than anything else. Uh, the point I was trying to make earlier, I did have one, is is you want to get the Foresight in hindsight edition of my service, which is completely free. Okay, it's delayed a minimum of one week, and it is subject to duration uh, availability. So if we get too many people on the service for too long, then there is a, a, a finite number, um, and I haven't really figured out what that's going to be. But at least sign up for a while and check it out for a few months or so to get a feel for what's going on. And nearly all, and I can't remember, uh, it's been a long time since I've used one that hasn't, but nearly all, virtually all uh, examples that I use come directly from the trading service. So if you follow along in hindsight, and I call it foresighted hindsight, so that way you're not thinking like he just made this up and he's just showing me the winner uh, and, and there are losers or he's not showing us. Yeah, it's all in there. Okay, you get to see everything warts and all. And then obviously I answer all my emails. So shoot me an email if you have any questions. All right, I'm anxious to jump to the charts here. So let's take a look at the overall market. And uh, before I forget, let's take a look at coal real quick. Uh, coal is doing very well, okay? And that's another one of those so-called possible Trump plays. So on pullbacks, yes. And we're uh, participating with uh, coal in the portfolio already, I believe. Um, and steel type of stocks. SXCP, that's steel related. And CNX is uh, coal related. So those CNX we just talked about a few minutes ago. Let me just pull up a few more charts here. And then we'll um, I'll get to your stock picks. But keep them coming. Now, let's take a look at the overall market. And the P's are down a little bit today, and they are stalling short of their prior high, highs. But let's not get too excited just yet. A couple things I want to flesh out. First of all, notice that we broke down out of the range. Now, you have to be really careful if you're a breakout trader. There's nothing wrong with being a breakout trader. Okay, I can think of a lot worse things you could do in the market. But you have to realize that more often than not, breakouts tend to fail. Maybe breakouts worked better before everybody, their brother had a PC in their desk and before technology reached a point where it is now. But more often than not, breakouts are false. Now, if you get a breakout, follow through, and then a pullback, that's a great pattern to trade. First pullbacks after base breakouts are a great pattern. Write that down. But sometimes when you get a range and a market drops below that range and it goes right back in, the psychology of the market participants who bought during the range, they begin to feel okay again. They begin, uh oh, wait a minute, we could be in trouble here. They're, oh, we dodged a bullet. See, they always come back. And they don't always come back, as you know. But when you have a range like this, you drop below it and you pop right back into it, it's a bit of a do over. It's kind of like a no worries situation. The longer you drop below the range and the longer you stay below the range, or I should say the further you go below the range, the more pressure is put on these people to bail out. And the more important that resistance becomes if the market rallies back up to it because they're looking to get out of break even. It's just human nature. Everything I do is conceptually correct based on the psychology of the market's participants. So anybody who bought during this range is going to be looking to get out to break even to get out at break even when the market gets back up to the range. Okay. So we have a little stalling action in the S&P 500, but that's intraday. Let's not get too excited just yet. Day ain't over yet, right? Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. Same sort of action going on in the NASDAQ. Sorry about that. I had a tickle in my throat. Um, let me get some water. 
Same thing going on in NASDAQ today. Not such a great day. Obviously, day ain't over yet, but um, this is not so hot. You can see nice little opening gap here, but then it came right back in. So for now, we're still stuck in a range with the NASDAQ. Ideally, I'd like to see it get out of the range and keep on going. Uh, time will tell, but we could end up with a lot more of these brick and mortar type of stocks. And maybe literally brick and mortar, because when we build that wall, that's going to take a lot of bricks and mortar. Now, the Russell 2000, pretty interesting today. It's not following suit with the NASDAQ. And then here's another testament for that. If you pop right back into the base, then it becomes a bit of a do-over. You can see Russell is almost making it back to multi-year highs. Not quite all-time highs. Got a little bit more work cut out for us there. But certainly a pretty impressive rally. We've swung from very overbought, I'm sorry, very oversold, to very overbought very quickly. So that's kind of interesting there. Uh, energy stocks I didn't mention earlier, they've been coming back as of late, but they're still a little sideways and choppy yet here. On a relative strength basis, longer term, they're still doing fairly well. But I wouldn't rush out and buy a bunch of energies just yet, uh, or if you've not already long some. Uh, just If you're long, sit tight, use your stops, or honor your stops. But if you're not long, uh, sit tight and see if they could break out and then keep breaking out for a while, okay? All right, let's go ahead and open it up for questions. Uh, did you want to touch on the TLT and the cost of the debt to build walls? Is that for, is that trend for T's or short on a bounce? Ah, uh, well, let's not talk about, you know, again, I know I'm making some wall jokes in here. But obviously, bonds are headed lower. Now, bonds are an efficient market. And look at the HV on this on this ETF. It's 10, okay, which is actually lower than stocks as far as the volatility is concerned. So I, I wouldn't actually rush out and trade bonds in and of themselves. If you wanted to make an interest rate sensitive play, then short the REITs or short utilities. And, and those are lower in volatility, too, and not really a great uh, a great way to make money trading although they might work out longer term. Uh, as a, I would prefer doing that as opposed to shorting the bonds in and of itself, themselves. Also, you have a lot of support in bonds. So at the most, at least, I always like to look at where would my trade get into trouble? Where would my trade hit some resistance? So in this particular case, it would hit some resistance around 120. So is it really worth uh, you know, trying to go in for three or four points on a trade? When your risk is always uh, your your risk is always potentially somewhat unlimited, so I would leave bonds alone. And if you felt like making an interest rate sensitive play, then then go after the REITs or utilities or something like that. Uh, Andrew says CCJ is a potential bow tie. CCJ is that uh, coal or uranium? I always forget. Uh, you know what, James? I might have to agree with you on this one. Let's take a look at the bow tie. Uh, it would run into tr some trouble around uh, 12 bucks, but that might be a good problem to have because that's a long ways away, percentage-wise at least. Uh, yeah, absolutely. This could certainly bow tie really soon. You can see the bow tie is coming together here. Uh, and if not, maybe it could even make a first thrust. Absolutely. Put that one on your watch list. Good eye on that. Congratulations. Or oh, was that Andrew? Okay, Andrew. Yeah, congratulations, Andrew. KRO, trend transition, KRO. Uh, we're officially open up for stocks now. And you could ask about anything. It doesn't have to be a stock, but uh, or questions about things prior. Now, in this particular case, you could see that it has potential supply that's a little bit closer to the market. So I would leave that one alone simply based on that. Um, if you take a look at chemicals in general, I think they're doing... The overall sector is doing fairly well. Let's see if we can jump to the industry. Now, the sub subsectors here, some of them are doing a little well, better. So what you might want to do is go back to, uh, let's see, specialty chemicals. Let's go to specialty chemicals um, and sort them by. Let's see. Let's get some volume in here. So you probably could find something that doesn't have as much overhead supply. See, look, that's, that's one that's headed higher. CC. Maybe on a pullback, CC. Let's take a look at a few more in here. That looked pretty interesting. This is kind of, uh, nope, it's got some issues. 
So maybe try to find something that doesn't have that uh, overhead supply to deal with. What is your best position for procreation? Best position for procreation? Is that a joke? <laughs> best position for procreation? Is that like my favorite sexual position? <laughs> oh, he wanted he said to ask me anything. Oh, okay. Um <laughs> uh, I don't answer that. Um I better not. <laughs> No, I think you say procreation. It means that once you want to procreate. Well, I'm I um I don't think it's possible for me to procreate anymore. I've had the the snip done. I know too much information. Huh? Okay, MTL. Yeah, MTL is kind of interesting in here. Um, and this is one of those somewhat of a regret trade because we did have this one on the list, and this was my example of. You can have regret when you have, I've been showing, let's say, on average, what, 10 stocks a day, and then you have one of them work out of quite a few of them, and you decide not to trade for various reasons and not take the trade for various reasons. You can't have the regret of not taking the trade, and this was one of them that took off. It's like, oh, man, it took off without me, but hey, settle down, Dave. A lot of the stocks actually imploded and you would have lost a lot of money. So you can't say, wow, it made money on the one trade and the lost money on the other 20 something. You don't tend to, we tend to have a bit of selective perception. This was a stock that turned out that way. Um, I got thrown for a loop. I'm thinking about procreating now. Uh, MTL. So uh, it's a little extreme in this run. I think I would find something that hasn't taken off uh, as much just yet, maybe on pullbacks, but now it's kind of broken out to new highs, and it looks like it's trying to come back here to this prior high. It's just too extended. I think I'd find something else. Apparently not married. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we could get into a lot of trouble here. S-H-A-N. Is that Schnitzer? No. S. C-H-N. I can never get that symbol right. Yeah, that's Schnitzer. Schnitzer looks kind of interesting. Uh, on a pullback, absolutely. Um, does have some issues way back here, though. So maybe try to find something a little bit clearer air. But if it could get a little further into this overhead supply, absolutely on a pullback. Angelo wants to talk about NL. And then, Jerry, you're next. Uh, in this particular case, it, it, it went down. First of all, it just kind of shot up on this one big bar. And I call those bottle rockets. Sometimes when a stock goes straight up, it comes straight back down, especially if it does it over one or two bars or a few bars, I should say. So I would avoid this stock. And now your volatility has gone through the roof or it's getting up there. So it's a little bit too extreme. So I would avoid that for now. And Jerry wants to know about S-G-E-N. It's going to be what? Some Seattle Genomics? S-G-E-N. Um, well, let's see what happens on a pullback. This is in my momentum list, and we did break out of this base, and then that's another play that I forgot to talk about. But Trump is seen to be friendly towards the biotech companies. And even drugs in general have done okay. Uh, and that's a couple I left out of my uh, playbook there or whatever you want to call that. Let's see if we can find drugs real, real quick. But to answer your question on that one, uh, keep it on your momentum list. But it's obviously not set up right now. But you can see drugs took off in here uh, yesterday. As usual, though, follow-through will be key. Thomas will talk about Ford. Ford I'm not going to like. Is Thomas actually Don? Because Don comes in and talks about Ford all the time. Uh, Ford's kind of wide and loose and all over the place. The volume here is just ridiculously high. 
not that I won't trade a stock with very high volume, but a stock with a lot of volume tends to be very efficient and just kind of chop around. So there's really no structure that's tradable in Ford, at least not lately. So I would leave that alone. Wix is going to be uh, one of them website deals, right? Um, this one actually looked a little dubious recently, but this is a case where, you know, here's a trade that did work out that we didn't take, okay? Uh, we saw it setting up as a short. It was in my lander list a few days ago, but we didn't actually take it just because I just didn't feel like, I didn't like the setup. It wasn't the greatest setup in the world, and I just feel like, I didn't feel like it was worth putting on a position. Now, keep in mind, I don't want to talk out of both sides of my mouth, but if you really, really like a position, then by all means, take it. Forget about the news. Forget about everything. But if a market is going completely sideways, as it has for months, and an election is looming, and a big election like we just had in the States, then you have to really think long and hard on whether or not you want to put on a short position going into these things, okay? And in this particular case, I just fi I figured it wasn't really worth it. So now, if you wanted to go long, this stock would continue to have to follow through. And then you would look to play pullbacks along the way. Okay, Andrew wants to talk about NVGS. We've got a couple of Andrews in today. Welcome. Okay, uh, first thing I'm seeing here is it's going sideways for a long, long time, okay? So always, as I often preach, never forget about the net-net, okay? If you do the show, no worries, uh, because we all have to learn somehow. And you might have your own methodology. You might be picking a bottom in here or something. And that's fine if that's what you do. But so far, it's kind of going sideways. But I, I do hear you. It is improving. The more I look at it, the more I can I, I tend to agree with you. And it's trying to bow tie up, okay? But for now, it looks fairly sideways. So I would wait to see if it could continue to break out. It did look to play a pullback. So you know what? I like it better now than I initially did. My initial reaction was uh, very much sideways. But now that it's closing this little gap here, uh, it would have to maybe get to eight or nine, at least let's say nine for me to get too excited about it and then pull back. My, my only problem with shippers is shippers could be really choppy from what I've found. And I'm not a huge fan of mechanical testing, but I did some mechanical testing uh, a few years ago. And one of the things that I discovered was that the shippers don't really trend that well. And I don't know why that is. I guess there's some efficiency tied to, uh, I don't know, maybe the underlying commodities or something that are being shipped. But anyway, it would have to follow through and pull back for me to get excited about it. So, again, I kind of beat you up at first because it was sideways, but I, I hear you. It, it is improving but it would have to continue to improve and then pull back, okay? Oh, okay, you said a potential bow tie. Yeah, Andrew, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's, it's possible. Um, I hear you as a bow tie. Yeah, it just hasn't really, it's kind of sloppy in the bow tie, okay? You want the bow tie, let me clean this chart up a little bit to show you. When you're looking at a bow tie pattern, and a bow tie, to those of you who don't know, aren't familiar with the methodology, we're simply looking for a 10-day, a and I'll show you the parameters here. We're looking for a 10-day a simple, a 20-day exponential, and a 30-day exponential moving average to come together from downtrend proper order. You see, notice that the 10 is less than 20, less than 30, to flip back around to uptrend proper order. But we want that to happen over a short period of time and that suggests that the, that the cycles have changed. The short, intermediate term, and somewhat longer term cycles have all changed. But you can see here, it's kind of messy. The 10 went above the 20, and then back below, then above, then back below, then above. And then now the 20 tried to get above the 30, but nope, came back down. So they're really, really messy. What you want to have happen is you want them to be really tight around the fulcrum. So let me see if I can get a blank chart up and show you that. So with a bow tie, you want to see them come down together, and then you want to see them kind of look like that. You want to see them look like a bow tie. It might not be a great example, but let's see. Something like this, where they all kind of come together, 
really, really tight. And the actual rules of the bow tie, as a as a general rule, I should say, or that that cross is that that crossover should happen over three to four bars. A little bit more is okay. Maybe maybe four or five is okay. But in general, you want this crossing to be as tight as possible. And that suggests that the short and the intermediate and somewhat longer term cycles have all changed. And that's kind of the, the, the thinking behind the bow tie. So if you're looking for a bow tie, you want uh, nice and tight bow ties. Okay, Sven wants to talk about V... VWS, VWS, let's take a look at that. VWS, I don't have it. Let's try VSW, nope, VWS. Yeah, that was not coming up for some reason. Is that a foreign stock? Uh, Elvis wants to talk about a few. Elvis, uh, I'll, I'll go through all of them, but in the future, just um, if you don't mind, hit hit assemble then hit return and then that way I can see it. it it's hard for me to track them when more than one I put put in a row but uh, welcome welcome uh, Elvis is a client so welcome to the show uh, yeah this will have to break out to new highs metals and mining there's quite a few stocks that are doing really well so if we jump to metals and mining and and let's just just for S and G's let's take a look at the 52 week highs here okay um, well, let's let's take a look at like a 90-day high because they're not they're not really making 52-week highs just yet. Uh, I would find stocks. I would go through this list, and we probably need a um, with the caveat that they have to have enough volume. But notice all these stocks that are banging out new highs in here. So I would find some that are already banging out new highs, and then wait for the pullback. Now, I don't sit here and watch a stock, watch stock, and wait for a pullback. I just run my scans every day, and I also look at my tradable universe, and if I see something pulling back after a big run, then I take the setup. But you want to wait for that pullback in here. Okay, uh, SLCA, SLCA. Uh, this is another metals and mining stock, but it hasn't... Um, it kind of rallied out of this deep pullback here, which it looked a little dubious here for a while. I would wait for this to break out to do highs and then look to play a pullback. And there's plenty of, of uh, metals and mining stocks that are at new highs now that could set up on a pullback. And STRA, STRA. Um, you know, it's kind of weird. These educational stocks are going nuts, and I don't know why. Uh, educational stocks and shippers are two choppy areas for some reason. I don't know why that is exactly, but you can see these educational stocks. That was another area that just failed miserably in my trend following test. Um, the move has just been too far, too fast. It just and it's only like one bar here and then one bar here. It kind of went straight up. It doesn't have any structure longer term, so I think I would pass on that one. It's a little thin too. But yeah, those educational stocks, which I'm, again I'm not a huge fan of, have been doing really well as of late. Yeah, no worries, Elvis. I was just, uh, just you know, the only reason I say that is because sometimes. Uh, I'll get confused as to which one I covered, so it's just for my convenience, if you don't mind, no big deal. You missed the cat? Let's take a look at the cat. Well, I wouldn't say you missed it because it's a big, thick stock. The volatility is low. It doesn't necessarily fit the methodology. Uh, it can, and it might, but you can see it went sideways for a long, long time, so I don't think you can't beat yourself up. You can't kiss all the women, okay? Um I guess I better lay off those jokes, but uh, now maybe on a pullback, but I'd like to see it follow through actually a little bit more past this old high in here, get way past this prior high around 90 round numbers, and then maybe on a pullback. But there might be um, better smaller cap stocks within this sector that might be a better play. Facebook? No. No, no. no, no, no. Question is, Facebook, is this like a buying opportunity? And the answer is no. 
Uh, if anything, this actually was a short uh, a couple days ago, and that's what I call a reversal gap strategy. It's when you have a stock that makes a brand new high, begins to gap down. It could be a little wide and loose. It's not my favorite stock in the world to trade, but it did set up as a potential short. So if anything, it's too late to short it now, maybe another pullback. But no, don't see this. I wouldn't see this as a buying opportunity at all. Another sand stock, SND. Okay, let's take a look at it. Yeah, uh, let's see. SND Smart Sand. Huh. Let's see what we have here. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, yeah, this is a potential. This is actually a, an IPO setup, potential buy. Uh, it would have to going into tomorrow, based on tomorrow's. It's a little IPO breakout pattern. It's something that I have. That's it's within it's within the um, IPO course. I don't mean to tease you, but I can't give everything away. I give a lot away though. Foreign excess. See, let's see. Yeah, I won't. I won't be able to pull it up for you. Uh, my apologies on that. But if you like, uh, Sven, if you could send me a um, a chart. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. If you could send me a chart, uh, just a screen capture, I'll be happy to take a look for it. Uh, make sure it's as blank as possible. A lot of people will send me screen captures. It'll have like 100 indicators on there, and I can't see the chart. So uh, just a blank chart looks something like this uh, would be perfect. I'll be happy to look at it for you. Steve wants to talk about ARL, yeah, ARLP. <clears throat> well, it's breaking out to new highs. It's a fairly new issue. Oh, maybe not that new. That's not. What I, was, I was thinking of something else. Um, it would have to keep breaking out, okay? And see, it's already kind of stalling its prior high. So we need to wait to make sure these metals actually follow through, and then let's play pullbacks. And that's kind of the thing that I was talking about earlier. Is yeah, there's some excitement in all these areas because President-elect Trump is 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 going to be our president. But let's see what happens. Like Bill Clinton used to say, what is, I mean, unless you're Bill Clinton, I should say, what is, is. So is they going higher or is they not? If they're going higher and they keep going higher, then absolutely we want to play them. But if this is like their last little pop, then we want to back off a little bit. Don wants to know about SGYP. SGYP. Um... It's kind of wide and loose. If anything, it almost looks like a head and shoulder in the works. Uh, again, this is one of those cases where, because it's so wide and loose, it would have to break out to new highs and stay there and then maybe look to play pullbacks along the way. Unfortunately, it does look like it has some bad memories out there. Uh, I think you might be able to find something better, maybe within biotech. So I would leave that one alone for now. And keep in mind, if you knew the show and I beat you up a little bit, it's just because... I'm just kind of um, adamant about being a trend follower. If you have other ways of trading, that's fine. But it's not going to fit within my methodology if it's not trend following. Felp, did we talk about this one? Yeah, this one's on my watch list. Uh, on a pullback, absolutely. This could be a, um, a stock that's worthy of trading. Absolutely. I've been watching that one, so good eye on that, Andre. CDO? Uh, CDL, volatility, dividend, weighted. Well, it's kind of sideways. looks a little bit like the P's, but sideways. So um, low in volume, low in volatility. I'm not a huge ETF fan. Occasionally, I will trade them to get exposure to area. Okay, ACRE for Donald. Um, yeah, if it keeps breaking out, maybe on a pullback, uh, yeah, put it on your list. A little bit on the thin side, but sometimes these IPOs can be pretty thin, as you know. SD, we talked about that one, right? That's going to be uh, Sandridge, or did we talk about it? 
This used to be um, this stock used to be listed a long time ago. Does anybody know if it's still uh, if it's a it's a redo? Um, in this particular case, I would wait for it to break out to new highs and then look then look play pullbacks. A little on the thin side too, but yeah, put it on your watch list for sure. For sure, B G F V B G F V. Uh, yeah, you break it out to new highs here. Um, not a big fan of going after retail stocks at this juncture. Longer term, a little wide and loose. Uh, retail's not doing so hot. I didn't mention that earlier, but um, if we take a look at uh, retail, let's see, if we got the major bigs in here. You can see retail's been headed lower. That's a big blue arrow there. So that's the only my only concern. But maybe on a pullback, okay? But ideally, in an ideal world, you want the market, the sector, the stock, and stocks within the sector all headed in the same direction. So if it's a great look at setup to you, if it continues to follow through on a pullback, then absolutely. But frame it within all those other things. So it needs to be the mother of all setups. Howard, Howard says, OCN weekly bow tie from low, emailed you day after bow tie. I don't, uh, I wonder if that one went to junk. OCN. Yeah, look at that. That's kind of cool. A lot of uh, overhead supply, but hey, who cares if you get in at two bucks a share? So yeah, that was a weekly bow tie. Okay. And notice it's, uh, well, it kind of meandered here, but then it crossed crossed again tightly so yeah I hear what you're saying yeah good job on that so you're that's that's awesome I used to go on a web show and they all every time they that's all they want to talk about was weekly bow ties there's definitely something there if you're coming off of all-time lows you get a weekly bow tie that's a pretty powerful pattern in fact let's just for SGs let's take a look at the battles of the weekly let's see what we got in a weekly Well, they kind of went straight up. They didn't make a big longer-term bottom. It's a little sloppy, but you can see the crossing is fairly tight uh, in here. So the metals made a weekly bow tie back in, I would say that would have triggered probably around June in the metals and mining. But we had we had daily setups. That CNX, remember that one? We just talked about it. We had a daily bow tie there right here in this one. I wonder if it's a weekly bow tie yet. Yep, sure is. So, I mean, this one, I think 30 bucks is the next stop. So that would be fantastic. I am long, so full disclosure. WB as a short. I'm not opposed to shorting stocks, but at this juncture, I'm, I don't want to say I'm cautiously optimistic, but I'd almost like to see the market break down a little bit before looking to short. And one of the reasons, it's kind of like the aforementioned reason of like the S&P, the Russell, and the NASDAQ, breaking down out of the range and then going right back into them. So it's not that you won't, you know, maybe tomorrow, maybe tonight, you'll see a short list, okay? I'm not saying that it won't short at all, but as a general statement, I'm not in a big hurry to rush out and short a bunch of stocks. Just yet. Now, you people who've been in the service know that earlier this year, I was shorting with both fists. Okay, I just don't feel like now's the time to short with both fists. But I will have to say, it's not a bad look at stock. If you were to go short a stock, you could certainly do much worse. You're coming off of all-time highs. I mean, the only problem is, this is kind of a, uh, it's not, the volatility is not crazy, but it still is a relatively new issue. So there's still some excitement around it. Volatility is decent. So it, it, you could get a, a pop against a trend. What was it, Wix or one of those ones earlier we talked about? But, yeah, it's not bad. I mean, you could certainly do much worse. Uh, it, it would be triggering in uh, 
recently or today for sure, okay? Uh, looks like you'd have a little bit of support down at 35. I guess that'd be a good problem to have. So I'm going to give you a, a, an okay on that one. I guess if the whole market was beginning to tank in here, it'd be a little bit more certain in direction, I would I would short something that looked like that. So uh, good eye, okay? Uh, dollar yen, dollar pound. I am, I am, uh, I'm long the pound. You, I'm tricked up here. Is a, I, I get confused. Uh, I'm long the pound, so I would be on on dollar pound. I would be bearish on dollar pound, and bullish on pound dollar. But you know, full disclosure, I'm I'm currently long. I'm long the GBP, GBP USD. Half the time I can't remember what what the uh, positions are, but I know I do have a position in the pound. So, but let's just take a look at the dollar in and of itself. I, I'm more interested in the um, the pound going up than than trading the dollar itself. It's just that uh, I'm in the states, so my trades are currency or uh, dollar denominated. Uh, the dollar is kind of uh, hitting a little resistance at this prior little high in here. Um, is, there a, is there a way for me to pull up the pound? I don't want to pull up, put my uh, account on the line. Let's see, uh, pound, is it? Oh, here we go, let's take a look at this. Yeah, here's the, I don't know if this is it or not, options index, no, that's not, I don't think that does me any good. Uh, yeah, a bullish. I'm bullish. I'm bullish on the uh, pound dollar. And the reason is, um, I mean, longer term, it's still in a downtrend, probably. But short term, we had uh, an hourly bow tie. Not that I focus. I don't focus on the hourly charts so much in stocks or at all in stocks. But forex could be more efficient than stocks. So I like to compress my time frames a little bit. And I like the hourly charts currently in Forex is what I like. And eventually I'll probably back out to just trade daily stock, daily Forex, and close my eyes and live through all the zigs and zags and volatility. But right now um, I, I tend to trade hourly, uh, mostly like bow ties off of major lows. I just might have paid for your webinar there. I hope I did. Webinar is free, by the way. Yeah, we talked about this one. What does FSX say to you? I don't know. We'll see. That's going to be FCX. That's going to be something metals, right? Freeport MacMoron. I like any company named MacMoron. Um, it looks good because it's breaking out. A little resistance here, but not a tremendous amount to worry about. Uh, if it can keep breaking out, maybe on a pullback. You want to see it clear this prior base. Decisively. The only problem is this move is so fast in here. It, you have to wonder if it's going to be sustainable, but it's going to have to clear the prior peak in here decisively. There's just other things within, like if you jump to this sub industry. Let's see what else is in copper. Well, it's really a small, and it's, it's small, I guess. Um, yeah, this one's all over the place too. So there's really not that many copper stocks to go after. Um, maybe a focus on steel and iron, or just see what our, see what, see what other metals set up. Donald wants to know about UCTT. UCTT. Um, yeah, on a pullback, absolutely. Put that on your watch list. A uh, little thin, but not too bad. It's it's tradable. Uh, certainly nice little run in here. Certainly trending. Looks like uh, it was a little wide and loose, but now it's getting its act together. Yeah, it's a good looking stock. Um, I'd like to see it get past some of this trading in here, way back here. So maybe if it got above 10 on a pullback, possibly. So it's not bad, Donald. But we got like three Donalds in here today. FXB. Oh, FXB is the uh, GBP. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, now you would think, well, Dave, why are you bullish? Well, I'm bullish shorter term because... Uh, on an hourly chart, there's a bow tie here, and on a daily chart, it's getting ready to bow tie. Okay, 
So now keep in mind that I'm bullish short term. Check back tomorrow. If I get stopped out, then I'm no longer bullish, okay? But it does look kind of interesting on a very short term basis. Let me see if this will work for what I'm talking about. Let me show see if I can show you. Now the only problem is, and keep in mind, you know, don't try to trade them and they get mad at me. It does take a few stabs sometimes to get these, but if you wait for a pair to make a major, major low and then watch for that bow tie and look to trade that bow tie. So you had one here and then you had like, I'd call this the second mouse signal. Sometimes the early bird gets the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. And you've got back-to-back -back bow ties coming off of major, major lows. Uh, you could, and I hate to say this because I don't want to get anybody in trouble, but you could, you could trade these hourly bow ties, close your eyes and put a stop at the old lows and, and forget about it. And two things are going to happen. You're either going to get stopped out a couple times in a row and then you catch the mother of all trends or you get stopped out a couple times in a row and you get pissed off and then watch it take off without you. I've had both happen to me, but if a market is going to turn, it's going to turn on an hourly first. Now, I don't want you to focus on the hourly and stocks because I think it's too noisy, but in something like Forex, I think it's okay to do that. And I don't have any Forex products or anything, so I have nothing to sell you there. But all the other good stuff that I talk about will work. Uh, no, this stock is just kind of all over the place. There's nothing for me here. Dow Jones 30, let's take a look at those. I usually don't look at the Dow that much unless it, they're down, unless I see they're down 800 overnight. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're breaking out the brand new highs in here. And then this could also be a Trump play because if we take a look at components, there's probably a lot of, 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 uh, of wall building stocks in here. Uh, Caterpillar, okay, breaking out the brand new highs. It's going to take some, it's going to take some, um, what do you call those things? Bulldozers, build the wall. What else is in here that's pushing it higher? Not Pfizer. But yeah, that's looking pretty good. So these big thick stocks might be getting a pop from, uh, from the Trump honeymoon. Let's call it that, for lack of a better word. I know for some it's not a honeymoon. S Gen, we talked about that one already. Yeah, we talked about that one, Jerry. Uh, Art wants to know about CRSP. CRSP. Well, it's kind of bouncing around. Um, I would wait for it to break out to new highs. I mean, sometimes in these IPOs, as you know, you can play the breakout pattern. So there's two ways to play this. Uh, play a breakout above 19, but make sure it closes above 19. Or the safer way of playing it would be to see if it could rally and continue to rally and then look to play the next pullback. Okay. Uh, super thin, though. Be careful. Lots of really thin on that. Court on a pullback. I guess if these IPOs keep going, I need to put the IPO course on sale again. Um, unadvertised special. If you want it, shoot me an email. I'll give you $200 off. How's that? We're taking time on a busy schedule to be here. Yeah, cord looks good. On a pullback, though, okay? That belongs in your momentum list, absolutely. Little stretch, little extended. So let's just see what happens on a pullback. Maybe a TKO would be awesome, okay? Okay, any more? Going once. Going twice. <laughs> Usually a bunch got here. There we go. Yeah, we talked about that one already. Uh, MTL. It's, it's kind of extended maybe on a pullback. Okay. Anybody else? Well, while we're at an impasse, I just want to thank everybody for coming. I appreciate you taking time out of busy schedule to be here. I am humbled and honored by your presence, as usual. No show next week. I will be at... Traders Expo in Vegas, come see me. I'll buy you a beer or a cup of coffee, depending on time of day and whether or not my work is done. Um, 
or we'll get a burger, whatever. And uh, keep an eye out next week, early next week, I will have an announcement for those who can't make the actual show, but I'd much rather see you there. Anyway, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, everybody have a great weekend. If we don't talk again, have a great, uh, I guess it'd be Thanksgiving or after Thanksgiving. So to those of you in the States, happy Thanksgiving. Have a great weekend, etc. Any unanswered questions, easy for me to say. Shoot me an email at dave at davelanger.com. Thank you so much.